Good evening. My name is Victor Okere. Uh, I want to allow me to use this remaining time now. I want to thank God for first safe trip down to Imo State and back, and also for the confidence to evangelize in the bus. Actually, I've not done it before. I, it was the day I tried. I, I wanted to. I was coming from Aja. I was going to the mainland that morning. I was going to church. So I entered the bus, and all that was coming to my head was preach, preach, preach. I was shutting down the voice, like, okay, I said, if I get to this, I will preach. We got there, I did not preach. The voice, I kept on postponing. Then I, as if I heard, if you don't, somebody else will. And immediately I heard that voice. I heard praise the Lord from behind. <laughs> and I was cold. I felt bad. But the way my heart was beating, I would have died from tension. But miraculously, I don't know. I think it's the testimonies I've been hearing here. Because... When I entered the bus, I just knew that I would preach in the bus. And I entered the bus, as the bus moved, I just said, good morning, everybody. And they responded. And I spoke and spoke and spoke. And they responded very well. I said, amen. Everybody shouted, amen. I said, wow, is that easy? So I went to the village. On my way back also, as I entered the bus, I wanted to postpone a little. Then I tried two bus stops. Then I said, good morning again. And they responded, and I preached. And after I finished preaching, an elderly woman that was dressed like a master. <laughs> Not my master, I use it for female or pastor, don't mind me. <laughs> so, as I finished, woman picked up from there and said, hey, like the brother said, then she continued to add something. I said, oh, these are my club people before. She was scared. So I gave her confidence. I thank God for that. I also thank God for my experiences in the village, going to farm with my mom after a very long time. And I learned faith. Like, my dad is a pastor. My mom is a believer. My dad preaches, but I think he doubts most of the things he says, because from the discussions we had, I'll come to that. <laughs> so my mom, when we got to the farm, the cassava I wanted to harvest, you are not looking matured, like very few. Then she bent down as we just got there, and she prayed, like asking God to multiply the harvest and everything. I was shocked, like my mom. And at the end of the day, the few stuff we saw became one full bag of um, harvested cassava. And I was impressed. I was happy. On my dad on the other side, when he sat me down to talk and... I had a, new, a different version of Lazarus and the rich man's story. My dad was like talk, talking about riches, that he wants us to be rich. He wants to be rich. I said, ah, that's not the Bible. Though. He said, well, say what of, say, if, you, if you say this kind of things you are saying, you'll be like Lazarus. I said, when he said Lazarus, I said, yes, I've caught this man. Then he was like, Lazarus was poor here. He was a servant on earth, and he was still a servant in heaven. I said, ah. He said, yes, now, even in heaven, the rich man was still telling him to bring water. <laughs> I said, ha. Ah. I, just, I just held my peace. I just held my peace, and I, said, I told him that, see, I've, this, I've made my choice. Your other children, let them be rich. I decided anywhere Jesus takes me to, that's where I will be. And he said, no problem, and he prayed. So I thank God for that. <laughs> and also, I thank God for brethren. Like before I joined God's Lighthouse, I used to join online. And I have this thing. Like when somebody is talking, I see what the person is saying. Like I see, if you are saying something, I, I see this image that is happening. Like I create a picture in my mind. So when I join online and some, I'm hearing testimonies, I'll be distracted trying to imagine what the person that is talking looks like. So that will take my whole attention. But while I was coming back from... In most states, I tuned in that Sunday morning, and testimony time. Each person that comes to testify, I want to say the name from the voice. I could see the person, so I was, 
happy at all. I was at peace. I could concentrate and hear the testimonies here without thinking too much. So I want to thank God for everything. And I came back here. Everything was still fine. May God's name be praised for all this in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. My name is Elisha James. I want to thank God for three things, life provision and good health for me and everyone around me. You know, God has been so good to me and all of that for everyone, even the work, workplace I'm at. I'm learning a lot of things there. God has been using even my boss, Bro Victor, providing so many things for me and all of that. His great mercy is number two. God has been so merciful to me. Many times when I look at my life, I would think if I were to be God, I would never forgive myself. And so many times, like, God has been faithful. I can't believe many times he still forgives me and, and still gives me hope of possibilities in following him. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Before Sister Loretta and Sister Queenet and Sister Faith or some comes up, I want to make a few announcements. So, um, <coughs> we are in a church meeting, we are in the presence of God, like we've always been told, this is just a reminder. First, we should try our best not to be distracted. It doesn't matter that it's testimonies that are being shared. The major thing that may be what God wants to give to you in the meeting can likely come from the testimonies. We heard um, Brother Victor talking about getting encouragement from the testimonies that are being shared here. So don't wait. Don't sit and wait for the worship or wait for the word to come or wait for a time to pray and press in. Okay? Every bit Every bit of this meeting is important. Every bit of this meeting, God has something for you. Pay attention. Common ways distraction comes. Number one, your phone. That's why it's our practice here. It's our tradition here to keep your phone off. If you feel, oh, your phone must be on, put it on. Put it on um, a flight mode. If you feel that flight mode, that the call must enter, so that they will not think you have you're, you're disappeared. Put it on silent. But it's best to keep your phone off on flight mode to avoid distractions, okay? Don't bother about wanting to check the scriptures. Typically, our scriptures will be pro projected on the screen. Don't be distracted. Don't, don't look for your messages. Just focus. And if, you, if during the course of the me message you miss something that's been said, don't get distracted and don't distract your neighbor, okay? While you are trying to say, oh, let me, what, what, what passage was that? What was that punchline that pastor dropped? Is you are missing the present punchlines and scriptures that are being dropped. You could, um, the messages would typically be available after the meeting in their raw form, so you could wait behind and get them immediately or wait till they are edited and, you know, publish in a more organized um, format, okay? Another thing, try not to sleep. If you feel sleepy, stand up, go to the back. During the course of our meetings, you usually would see people stand up, stand at the back. They are, they are not ushers, okay? They are trying to fight sleep, okay? And yes, just in case we've forgotten, there are, there are different methods we've been taught to um, use to fight sleep in this house. One of the methods is, you know, when you feel sleepy, you raise your hand in a fist, okay? Not like this, so you don't confuse the moderator or the pastor. They may, they may think you have a question to ask. So you raise your hand in a fisted form like this, okay? Raise it straight, raise it well, okay? If, you, if it's not working, you could stand up. Okay, let chewing gum not be your first resort, okay? Try to fight it. And that's it. Okay, next we have, um, if you need to use the toilets, a convenience, we have two here, to my left and to my right. We have those arrows you see are pointing um, towards. So don't, no need to step out. Avoid stepping out as much as possible. 
the point is make sure your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body is placed, is positioned properly to receive as much as God is expecting you to receive from him in these meetings. Okay? Yes, one more thing I forgot. Typically, especially if this is your first time, you may get distracted by what is on this backdrop, you know, the patterns and the interesting things there. Try not to be distracted, okay? You can always ask for it. We have it in picture forms, okay? You can ask for it after the meetings and you get them. Someone will forward, um, someone will be available to forward the pictures to you so you can have them to yourself. Don't, when pastor is talking about something that really affects your life, don't be distracted trying to crack what the tabernacle of Moses means during the meeting, okay? I believe we understood all or most of what I've said. Okay. So can we have um, Sister Loretta? And then after Sister Loretta, we'd have Sister Quinet. Then we'd have Sister Faith or so. Remember, you have five minutes. Praise God. My name is Loretta, and I want to thank God for provision for my family. So when I got home, I realized that things had gotten way better. I mean, the quality of food we ate increased, and I want to thank God for that. I also want to thank God for the grace to stand at home. I mean, sometimes you could feel very suffocating. It's, it's really, really, it's a feeling that I can't really describe. And coupled with the fact that, you know, coming from a time where I would be going to church every day and I'm not just going to church like going to church, but I'm actually going to learn God's word and I'm in a gathering of true believers, people that I can say, okay, these people are really, really serious about the things of God. Then going back home to a place where, in fact, I'm almost the most righteous I could find, I mean. And it was really, really, really do not feel good. But I thank God because at least on Sundays, Sundays were my best days because I would be to the PH brethren and things like that. So I also want to thank God for faith, growth in my faith. So yesterday, I received a call from my mom. She was, I don't know, advising me something of such sort that she got a call from my dad. My dad was complaining about me that I don't want to do anything for myself all in the name of God, God, God. That I want to carry God on my head and I want to act like I'm the first Christian ever. But my main testimony here is that normally I would be the person that I didn't like. Anybody could shout at me, but not my dad. I didn't like having any, I don't know, because he hardly shouted at me, he hardly beat me, he hardly... We hardly have such encounters. So whenever he did, I'd feel very bad and stuff like that. But the very first time such a thing happened and he was like that, he's not going, in fact, he's going to stop, as in stop giving me school fees and stuff like that. I was crying and all the blah, blah, blah. So I told my shepherd and there was something she told me that the Holy Spirit brought to mind yesterday. She was like, why are you crying? Why are you acting all so worried when nothing has even happened? Those things are just threats. So why do I make a fuss over something that is just, it's actually at the point it's a threat. So yesterday when it happened, I when my mom began talking, I knew that I'm someone that, okay, not just me, I think normally for every person, you control the things you hear because though at that moment it may be like it's not affecting you, but it goes down to your subconscious and you realize that gradually those things begin to affect you. So when she started talking that this God thing, I should not do, 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 that even in church, that now church people are after money and that I should look for a way to have money for myself and things like that. I don't know. I, I couldn't take it. It was something that really hurt me anyways, but I found myself speaking in tongues. I mean, I was praying that those things, I was actually praying while she was talking to me, hearing what she was saying, but I was trying to block them so they wouldn't sink into me. You know, that something, that feeling of maybe later it will now start affecting me and I'll be like, this God thing, I beg, I'm not doing it again. No, so I was able to pray and talk to God. I was like, God, you're the one I'm really, really depending on. The whole idea of 
even if my dad doesn't want to train me anymore, besides, he's not the one that owns my life. So if because of following God, he's going to stop training me, I believe as far as I'm in God's path, he's going to take care of me. So the ability to hear those things and not break down. So, and also, I remembered what my shepherd had said, that nothing has happened yet, so why should I even start crying? Because I already started crying anyways, but I cleaned my tears, and the next moment I was laughing. So I really want to thank God for the ability to okay, develop such shock absorber I want to thank God for provision. Provision in many areas, especially in the area of food and accommodation. It's not really been that easy, but I want to thank God that the scripture, be grateful for food and clothing, is becoming more real to me that sometimes it will be like, it's so, like, it's not going, there's not going to be a way, like, you go hungry, but God always end up providing, and not just for me, but for the, for my brother's family too. Secondly, I want to thank God for accommodation. Okay, so, growing up, I stayed with my parents, like, from when I was born till when I started university, I don't remember spending a week or something with a relative. So it has always been, okay, it has always been parents. Okay, when I went to the boarding house in SS1 to SS3, that was the only time I left the four walls of my father's house. So I don't, I'm uncomfortable in a way in a house or a home that is not my home. It's different if it's hostel and I can adapt because it's like a public place. So this I felt I, I felt it was not an issue. But there is this part of me that I know I have a home like my parents' house. So there are certain things I can like persevere in people's house. But when once you cross this limit, I I will I will just go back home. Like <laughs> I don't want to take it. Or um, there is also this part of me that feels okay. You just stay here for two weeks or for three months. So just persevere through, and then like it will be over. It's not going to be forever. So you you just stay. You just persevering, not because. Um, you like it, but because you know it will soon be over, please, I beg, I beg, and you are counting down on the number of days left for you to just go home. So this season, something happened in my brother's house, and the landlord said that he wants to renovate his house, blah, 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 that he should pack out and look for elsewhere to stay. And my brother was kind of, okay, can, can we... Can you make a provision for a small place? Why they are renovating this room or this area? We can just squeeze ourselves into a particular area because it didn't have where to go to. So it was like news to me, not until I came back from work one day and everyone like packed out like the place was the place was something else. I mean, the wardrobe where I put my clothes, everything was inside the wardrobe. Television, like just inf including sensitive things that can get spoiled if you do not handle it well. So things were just heaped up, like there was literally no space for you to put your hand and remove a single cloth to change up. I stood there and I was looking at the old place and the first instruction was don't open that wardrobe sensitive things are inside and something just registered in my mind go home like why are you suffering here why all these things but I thank God that I mean that night I felt like saying mommy I'm coming home but I thank God that I was able to stay and the whole, like having to sleep on the clothes you I want to thank God for that experience. And I mean, 
they have not finished renovating the house yet. But things you come up, oh yeah, just just leave this scene. Maybe go and stay in a brother's house, like in a brother in a sister's house until this whole thing is over. And I know they really need me. But I want to thank God that I do not run away from that seemingly uncomfortable situation just because I have another option. I want to thank God that God has helped me and is helping me. Despite everything, I want to really give God the glory for that. I want to give God for glory for all the experiences and all the classes he's putting me through. May God's name be praised. Amen. Okay, before Brother Salvation shares his own testimony, I... Okay, just a reminder, okay? Yeah, we are, uh, yeah, we are taught also, not just spiritual things, we are taught how to use our vocabularies, our vocabulary properly and just generally things. Our pastor is, you know, particular with English language. Okay, so no, the, uh, I, um, Sister Faith made a mistake, which she corrected, by the way, but it just brings to mind because I've heard I've still heard some of us make the mistake. It is a brother or a sister and brethren or the brethren, depending on the situation. Please, it is not a brethren at all. Okay? So let's, whenever you get there, whenever you get to, we are just, that brethren is just very sweet. That your brain just brings out brethren before you think about what you're saying. Okay? Just, you can't say a children, right? No matter how excited you are. <laughs> so it's the, a brother, a sister, and brethren, okay? So I want to thank God for delivering me from a fear of rejection. So during the Passover retreat last year, of course, I didn't come out because I didn't know I had it. But about two months, three months after then, I was going through a phase in my life, and I believe the Holy Spirit began to open my eyes to things, you know, I didn't know I was struggling with, the fear of being rejected. It began to show me patterns all through my life. Okay, it was a month after that. I remember the situation now. It began to show me things in my life that needed to be fixed, and it was showing me the root cause of my issues. So I realized that over the years, I, 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 I usually would not venture into anything. I'm not 100% sure I can do because I'm afraid of making a mistake. And I'm afraid of being corrected on making a mistake. And it affected so many things. I ran away from doing so many things. Even things I had done before, I knew I could do it, but if there was even 0.00001%, of a possibility of the possibility of my making a mistake and being rebuked or corrected for it, I would just run away from it. And and I what something happened to me when I was much younger, okay? And I remember I used to be the brightest in my class, but for some reasons I can't give now, okay? Because of I had a an unjust teacher. Okay, let me just say it. So I had a teacher in when I wanted to write common entrance in primary five, he, he organized um, tutorial lessons for certain people that had the money to come for it. And then he taught them, he taught them things that he knew was going to come out in the exam and our final exams. And he would not teach it in class. And so no matter how smart I was, I could not pass as much as I normally would. And so on the day of our graduation, I came third. I was happy, of course, I was happy. I was still in the first three. But when I went home, now, of course, some of our parents do this, but they don't know better, okay? And I remember my father, after removing my, my fine jacket, <laughs> and I was, I, was, I was flogged thoroughly, okay? And when the Holy Spirit began to show me how that affected me, and so it felt like no matter what I do, like, it's not my fault. No matter what I do, I will never be good enough. So I wouldn't even try. 
anywhere my power reach, I stop there. I would not try, I would not, you know. And it's affected so many areas of my life. I don't even want to talk, I can't talk about right now. But recently I observed, of course, working in this house. And that's why a lot of times when we are asked to work for the kingdom, work for this, we are always looking for incentives. We, are, we always want to see a benefit before we do it. But being placed in different responsibilities in this house, working, having to do things, having to learn, you know, working in GTT, which till today I don't know how I became part of, but <laughs> all of those things were, I can't give so many details now, were orchestrated in a way that has made me be able to break out of that. I mean, you are in a place where you're sure that if you are being corrected, you understand the mindset of, the mindset behind being corrected. You know it's not because this person hates you or this person disdains you. And of course, in this house, typically when you are corrected, especially if it's a pastor, he, typically, he usually would point out, give you reasons why it's not just, you know, beating you from head to toe without <laughs> giving all of those, and giving you a reason. Teachings follow it, the discipline, that's the point. So and I realized recently, I gave this testimony, I shared with my housemates, but I felt the need to share it here, that I began to count all the number of things I could do with my hands, I could just do. And I realized that I could do so many things, I can't even begin to list it. Now, once I see something and I decide to put my hand to it, I just know how to do it. And this is me coming from a place of not wanting to do anything. Let me just, I remember my uncle used to, like it affected even my working in the house, living with people, house chores. I would not do it because I remember once, even to sweep, I'll be afraid of sweeping my uncle's house because well, because I remember my, perf my mother was a perfectionist, okay? So even after I've swept, my phlegmatic self, using all my power, I've swept everywhere and everywhere is shining in my eyes. My mother will come with her slippers and say, I'm still feeling sound under these slippers. <laughs> so it seemed like in my head, in my head, I've, I've, I've done everything. I know it, it wasn't exactly their fault, but those, that was the way it translated to me, okay? But I remember my uncle telling me that it's only your books you know how to read, they are useless every other area once, okay? And even my grandmother used to say the same thing, but recently I realized that I'm able to do so many things. Like there's this dexterity, and coming from that place, I thank God for that deliverance. I've been able to break out from that stronghold, and I'm free to do whatever is placed before me to do. I say may God's name be praised. Amen. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. There's a song that's coming to mind. And even though it's in Yoruba, I will sing it first. And then I will sing it the English version, okay? It's a popular one, okay? I don't know why it's coming to mind, but. Oh, Shuba Re Re Oh, oh Shuba Re Re Oh, Bata Uri. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, great miracle worker. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Invisible God, the miracle worker. You are worthy.
understanding in the spirit we thank you for the journey 
We thank you for the journey so far. <laughs> we thank you because you are consistent, Jesus. We thank you. You've seen us through, Jesus. We've seen your hand in our lives. We thank you, we thank you.
Father God, Father here again. We love to know you, Father, for us you were slain. Whenever of God we come, Lord, you were here. Touch our eyes and heart, Father, please touch our ears. Show us, Lord, your heart, Father, touch every part. Lord, please come, Father, Lord, Lord, please come. Guide us with your hand, Father, Lord, show the land. Set us free, almighty God, all those who stand. Set us high, O oh God, with all your hand. Father, God, watch from, Lord, your people send. Tell us what to do, Father, we come to you. Guide us to the truth, Father, we lost of God. We love to give you praise, Father, we love your ways. Show your mighty grace, Father, so now we praise. Everywhere we turn, Father, Lord, let it rain. Father, break the things that would keep us in chains. You are Lord our God, you are the mighty one. So Abba, our Father, now again we come Bless not everyone, please don't just not bless some Father, open eyes and Lord, release our tongues Kare parasata telakati Re parasita talibakatsatambara Father, we are gathered to you, your people, the one we seek. You are the one who is with us. Through you, we do valiantly. Thank you, good God. Thank you for access. Thank you for your face. Thank you, Father, for grace. We receive all the grace you have available for us. We ask that every iota of it rest on us, O oh God. The spirit in our souls, in our bodies, O oh Lord God, let your favor be manifested. Meet every man according to his need. Pour out your spirit of truth here, O oh Lord God. Let the spirit of truth find expression. Fully God, fully holy one, we pray today again. Hey, Father, send the rain upon the ones who are thirsty. 
Oh, those who were hungry, Lord, we ask the Father here. Hey, hey, oh, Lord, he got out. Hear the children here, Father, Lord, please hear me. Father, open up our ears and our eyes to see. Break us free, Adonai, from all the bondage. Father, lift us, Father, Adonai, to the new stage. Guide us with your hand, Father, give commands. Father, help us see the land, for you promised us. You gave it, Lord God, unto Abraham. We're the children of the ones whom, Lord God, you love. Help us see all that you give. Help us know all that's available. Help us be your children free. Enable us to be wise and stable. Do more for us than we're asking. Because it's your nature. Give us light much light give us peace much peace give us joy much joy let your righteousness abound in and through us let us only do that which is your will now good God ears be open eyes be open hearts be open mouths be open Welcome the hosts of heaven, we ask that you welcome. Welcome is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Everyone that is contrary, that is against our God, be gone from this space. Command you to depart immediately. Step out, step away. Strip you of all authority. You may not express yourself. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Oh, lift. Distraction be gone. Thank you, good God. Thank you for your light. Lord bless his name, Father we bless you, we appreciate you. Wonderful in every way today, Father we've come again, Lord we love to give you praise, Father for all the grace, all the things that Lord you do come up from only you, Father while the we Lord has, Father bless us too. You're doing all over the earth. Let us partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Sweets of just men made perfect. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your great and mighty promises. Blessed be your name. Let your word be living and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Pierce to divide your son of soul, spirit, joint, and marrow. Discern the thoughts and intents of God. Let all things be open and naked for the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Of your own will, he begat us, make us a kind of first fruit of your creation. Let us walk in this. Thank you. Amen. You may have a seat. You're welcome to this Friday meeting.
and uh, if you're visiting, you're extra welcome. When I start preaching, I'm sure I'll see your faces. Better. And observe those that have added with. like for us to go to the book of Second Peter verse 3 from verse let's read from verse 1 then. beloved this is now my second letter to you both of them are reminders to stir you to wholesome thinking. The purpose of the letters called the first and second book of Peter, first and second epistle, is to stir you to wholesome thinking. Another translation says, I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. So there's something like wholesome thinking. Oh yeah, all those English people. Synonyms for wholesome. Are you sure? Don't just, I didn't say whole, though. Don't start looking for every synonym for whole. Wholesome thing. You have to use it in context of thinking. Wholesome thinking. Uh, that com com Rounded. Mm. Rounded has no morality in it. It's intellectual. Wholesome thinking. Proper thinking. Proper. You have done expert and looked at your Bible since then. Now, wow. Accurate. That's still cerebral. That's like proper. What well, proper is correct. What's the other? There's a word someone used. Please don't join and make sounds if you have nothing to say. Don't. I mean, I said those English people. If you know your primary strength is Ibibio, leave it. Me, you didn't see me put in my mouth. I'm just, um, yes. What did you say? Pure, pure, pure thinking. That is the best so far. But cowardice, you know, typically will cost you. <laughs> pure thinking, wholesome. Don't you know what the word wholesome means? Wholesome content. Ah. Go to this channel. They have wholesome content. When I say proper or accurate content. No. In the content. Pure. Full. I didn't think it was uh oh. <laughs> yeah. well, same thing. I don't think full thinking. No. I just helped you. Pure is the closest. So pure thinking, I'm sure, I think some translation even says that. Healthy, healthy, wholesome. Wholesome, just think, wholesome food. Sound. Sound. Right. Right thinking, that's close to proper. That's it. This, this, when something is wholesome. Ah, no, no, only feed that. Don't feed them with junk. Give them a wholesome food. Right food, proper, pure good quality okay okay if I allowed you to use more than one word you probably would have done it good quality thinking there's good quality thinking then there's 
poor quality thinking. There is defiled thinking. There is bad thinking. I can assure you that it is not only Peter's epistles that stir us to wholesome thinking. Why? If you go to verse 15, he talks about our brother Paul, and he says that Paul writes with the wisdom God gave him. Verse 16, let's see. Uh, uh, he writes this way in all his letters, speaking in them about such matters, matters similar to what Peter is saying. Paul also writes about that. So, all the scripture is given with the intention of steering you up in a proper direction with that which is good. If it conveys that which is bad, low quality, bad quality, then you know it's not from God. So if you hear anyone preaching or teaching low quality, bad, poor quality stuff, no, it is not God. They say, ah, no, it's okay to do this. It's okay, this doesn't matter, and that. Always ask yourself, this thing this man or woman is saying right now, is it making me think purely? Or do I stand there and say, ah, I see. Like a, a, a woman went somewhere and a, it was a ladies' program, and this other lady who came, who was invited to preach, was saying, Women, shine your eyes. Women, shine your eyes. What did she tell? She told them, Make sure you have a secret account your husband does not know about. Make sure you hide things from your husband. Make sure, just make sure there's another plan running, a background software. And she said, Women, and all the women shout, Shine your eyes. Just corrupted the whole batch. Just gathered women, corrupted them, sent them home. <laughs> so they'll go home to their husband and start thinking, <laughs> Mugu. Husband that you used to be open with and you were happy, suddenly. <laughs> now I'm not saying all husbands are like that, but I'm saying imagine you've been open to your spouse all this time. Then someone told you, shine your eyes. By the time you repeated, shine your eyes, that incantation. 50 times in one meeting. Your eyes are shining like, have you seen a cat at night? When you see it, you go, hey, yeah. Or you go like, hey. Your eyes are shining like headlamps. You know you're in tiger mode. You're dangerous. Now you're a dangerous creature. Thanks to someone who stirred up your mind to defiled thinking instead of wholesome thinking. So one of the ways you judge if someone is bringing the word of the Lord to you, ask yourself, this thing they are saying now, does it create wholesome thinking? When I left that meeting, did it make me think of my mother or father or my auntie or uncle? Hey, yeah, I can't wait to see my parents again and help them and clean the house and make them feel happier in this little time. I'm going to have only two weeks with them. Oh, I'm glad. I hope I can make them happy. Is that how you feel? Or you, you're thinking? Yes. This is what I'll tell him. Based on this thing this preacher said, I'll tell him at least, bah, bah, he'll drop me. Worse. Bad, rich, bad. Double. But I'm aiming for triple, but if it's bad. So I'm going, as I'm going, I'll tell him, Papa, huh, if you see what they've now done in school, but you won't understand. It's called cosmiosis. But don't worry, Daddy. It's, not, it's my job to suffer. Your job is to fund it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll be needing 15000 for <laughs> this course mandatory. Hey, my child, cosmiosis. <laughs> and, and he says, ah, I don't have other. And he said, you try and raise the other, you ask your mama, eh? and gives you 10K. You see, the thing was five, whatever you're looking for, and that's not the name, but it's 5K, but you said at least, 
So you, you tripled it, you got double at least, and off you go. Whoever preached that message and made you leave there with such unwholesome thinking was not preaching the word of God. If it doesn't make your mind purer, better, with regards to people, with regards to anything you do, then it is not given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You can reject it without feeling guilty. Do you understand this? If it is from the Lord, it will be wholesome. It will be pure. It will be proper. It will edify. It will build you up and people. It will build people up. You left there and you decided to be praying for your family members, your unsaved family members, every day. Instead of once in a remembrance, once in a disaster. Ah, have you heard? Candice. Ah, another accident. Too. This, this, uh, this, since the beginning of this year, that's seven times. That's the only time, remember. That's how you flow. But you heard something and it drives you. You heard something and you decide to be more generous, more helpful, more of a blessing. You leave there and say, oh, I can't be saying this word from my mouth anymore. Ah, and I've been using this word up and down. I can't be using it anymore. I can't. God forgive me. That means you heard true scriptural preaching or teaching. But if you leave there, you're prouder. You finish hearing a sermon, you leave there, you're looking down at everybody. <laughs> yes. You're acting like a sovereign. You leave a place. When you leave, you're scorning everyone. That what you heard was not wholesome. You leave a place, you're angry with everyone. Ah, that one is very popular. You leave the meeting. Ah, wait a minute. I'm being guy. Ah, ah. I, I tell you, eh, even you, ah, no, from today. Ah, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody try, I go enter. Waiting. Are we, are we hearing the talk? It will take us for granted. Take us. Say in the name we are, we are Christians. Cut out someone's head. But like, before next week, I'll give testimony. No, no, no. I, I, you don't have to tell me now. I'm just waiting. Let's just go back to that room. All that nonsense. She would tell me they don't sell pearl in her village. You left a meeting, and this is the anointing you carried. I should tell you that it was not the word of God you heard. An angry person came, someone whose wife or husband has frustrated. They came, said this anger, I cannot be angry alone, and sprinkled it like holy water. Scatter frustration. You went back with frustration and anger. As you're entering the room, the, the guy, comes and starts, eh. Eh. <laughs> they, wa they warn me in church about you. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, but all that to me, they do all this time. If you try me, eh, I will, I, I will beat you hands down. You think before, I've heard the word. Understanding has come. I am more than a conqueror. I am telling you, children of God, I'm sure you think nobody has preached it. Huh? Yeah. I, have you heard Rita Bai? Yes, if you haven't heard him, have peace. Your life will be better. Just face your side, don't worry. I came across him a week, two weeks ago. <laughs> this old guy said you should carry weapons, though. <laughs> Direct. No, no, this is not a misinterpretation or a softening. He is not softening it. He's not pretending. The, why I like him, he's, he's honest. I like honest people. Not the ones that say, well, let's love. You see, we are not, it's not that we hate, it's not that we hate our nothing. By two guns, two guns. Two. Sorry, I was saying, yeah, yeah. No, his own is open. It's just direct. <laughs> With a bye. Ah. 
a call to violence. Not spiritual. There's nothing spiritual about it. It's not. Hmm. <laughs> He said they were coming, I was coming. They were coming. I, I was pulling out my belt. The head, the head, the metal head. I hit them, I hit them, hit them, hit them. Both of us, the blood all over our head. And they say, ah, ah, this one a pastor and a warrior. <laughs> I'm not saying there's no situation where one has to be bold. And God, people have different, but you know, there are people, and I, the first part, when I, two weeks ago, I saw some of the comments. I said, God have mercy on Nigeria and Christians. See all the support he was getting. This is a proper man of God. This is how men of, I'm like, dear God. Oh God, have mercy. If God will show us mercy and allow there to be peace, but if some of the things we've seen, prophetically come to pass. I, these are the people that prepared the way. They prepared their hearts. Transition anger and that is violence into people. That is like the time of the crusades or being a, a Muslim jihadist where you're told that you will get extra blessing for physically doing things. That's what, that's what happens when preachers call people to violence tell you that you should carry weapons be that is openly directly nothing they don't touch you you touch he says that even, they're not afraid of anything that if he dies that at least you die you know as he, he he died he removed your own head or something as like this is not a matter of our repent there's nothing like repenting like he believes is the will of god the passionate desire of almighty god just like a jihadist believes that if he can blow all of you up, 70 virgins, welcome the groom. That's exact, that's what he believes. And he's passing it on. And many all over are saying, yes, this is the pure word of God. Please, can I suggest that it is not? And he's not staring up their mind to hold some thinking. Is staring up their minds to unwholesome thinking. Completely contrary to scriptures. God have mercy on us. Amen. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are not physical, but they are mighty through, God. through, God. through, God. through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down thoughts, not, not flesh, not hair, not, not ear. Eh? Peter, not people's ears. Casting down. Peter cast down the guy's ear. <laughs> the Lord Jesus said, when there's a casting down, I'll say there's a lifting up. And listen, put it back. Did that cast down? Cast down. Yeah, the, John and James wanted to pull down fire. They said, Master, <laughs> thank God we are here. Should we? James, hmm? John. John, hmm? James. <laughs> Master, we are not called Buanerges for nothing. Sons of thunder are here. Sons of thunder. So I think maybe when Jesus called them sons of thunder, in their mind they saw themselves like Thor. <laughs> Coming down like the <laughs> Who knows how many discussions they had behind about the usual what the master called us? He called Peter Rock. Called us sons of thunder. I know it. You know, sometimes I feel a tingle in my finger. <laughs> so they're like, is this the time? Master. <laughs> I tell you, I, I tell you. <laughs> Should we call down fire? These guys had the audacity to reject you, Master Sir. I'm lawyer. <laughs> they had the audacity. Should we? John, can you feel it? <laughs> These guys were right. 
There's better way to go. Woo! The Lord Jesus doesn't say, <laughs> no. He rebukes them. You don't know what spirit you have. That's not our character at all. That's not our motive. We don't flow like that. You guys better take note. We don't flow like that. James and John, they left there like whip dogs with their tail between their legs. Who did they end up calling Apostle of Love? This John, no? Ah, this John. This violent John. <laughs> he thought he, he ate. It's not how he began when they ended. He was a different man. James, where was James? They removed his head since. <laughs> the guy that wrote the book of James, it's not James, the brother of John. No? It's not James Zebedee. Ah, they removed James' head since. They removed it and people liked it. The Bible says so. Yes, when Herod saw that the people went like, hey, hey, hey Herod, oh, we we'll vote for Herod next year. Hey, we'll Herod. He now said, who else is their major, a major leader? It was James, John, and Peter. Say, hey, bring that Peter. We'll remove his head by Easter. They think on the street, the man. He doesn't know there's a time for everything. Jesus has said of James and John when their mother came to lobby for appointment. So they thought Jesus would become king. Now, now, now. That is like, now, now. So their mother came, greeted him very well, and said, can I ask? All of you that are like lobbying is the worst sin on earth. Can I ask? Rabbi, can this my two sons? This one is James. This is the first one. This one is John. Come. I tell you, the people were boys. You guys don't be, they were boys. You don't bring your mother. Grown men don't bring their mothers anywhere. Do you know how embarrassing that is? They were boys. For real. He says, can they, just the two, just my family members, just us. <laughs> Who gives a hood? Let them go and bring their mother. Yeah. <laughs> can this one and this one sit on the left and the right? Just the two major positions. Just <laughs> let there not be any space. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't appoint others, <laughs> the edges, <laughs> outer darkness, fringes, but the core, the core leadership, just the Lord Jesus, so, so gentle, he doesn't say, woman, how dare you try to manipulate me? <laughs> it is not. I'm not the one that handles appointments. Uh, that's, that's not me. It's my father. Um, but by the way, can they drink? Can they go through? What me, I'm about to go through to sit on my chair. Can they go through? The people said, we'll go through. He said, you'll go through. <laughs> 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 For those who don't know, go and read it. They said, we can. He said, you will. <laughs> we are not disagreeing. I've seen your future. You, you die. <laughs> you, you keep living. In fact, they say they don't know about how he died. There's a story that he's not even dead. Yet. So one goes, one. That's God for you. Before anybody even thought of dying yet. Before Stephen. Before any. Is Stephen there? Stephen be already there? Eh? Huh? That was just the open mouth. Stephen died in. I know, no. I, I, where else? I love his hands. It is very funny. Stephen died in chapter seven, and uh, we turned and come out. Uh, then come out. Uh, this guy had since. Uh, wait now. Twelve. Yes, yes. Okay, Stephen was dead. This is the first apostle, first leader that they removed. Yes. So James was put to death with the sword. 
That's how he, he drank the cup, fully. <clears throat> Excuse me. While John just kept living. You can't decide for the Lord many things. You can have a say in some things. But there are many things you have no say. Wholesome thinking was not in those people's head yet. But as you keep hearing the truth, you begin to think well, better and better. When you think of something, you think the right way. Two, th two directions of thoughts will come to you. You think the right way. Are you hearing me? You all must determine that you only think the right way. If you read your Bible and you stand up, anybody stands up from there and starts to preach like James and John of old. Starts to talk like Peter, pulling sword. Who is it that wrote about suffering? First Peter 4. Verse 12 to 15 or 16. You want to read with me? One to go. Beloved. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that has come upon you as though something strange were happening to you. So fiery trials should not be strange. Who is saying this thing? A guy that pulled weapons when they came to carry his master. And the master warned him, you don't want me to drink the cup my father has given me to drink? Which, excuse me, for those who are troubled and say, are you saying, are you saying, are you saying that's how they be looking down Christians? Most people that talk like that, first and foremost, you're not a Christian. Most times you're not born again. Don't bother. You go to church, but you're not born again. Very many. There are some that are born again and confused, but some are not. <laughs> <clears throat> so when you join and talk, you'll be saying, we Christians. Anytime you hear someone say, we Christians, say, Bia, Bia, uh, Bia. Uh, uh, when did you become a Christian? What would be the next thing they would say? I was born. My family, I'm from a Christian family. Immediately, you know they are not born again. So, okay, don't say we. You're, you, okay, you're a, you're a, you're a, a government Christian, official document Christian, then there's real Christianity. So first, first, separate that thing. Oh, they'll be lumping. Do you, do you remember the children of Israel when they came back from, <clears throat> when they came back from, uh, where did they come back from? Babylon. Do you remember people showed up and said, ah, we, we are like you. Huh? We have always worshipped, uh, you know. Now we, we. And the people said, no, it's not we anything. We are new. We are not the same. We are not pursuing the same thing. We are not doing the same thing at all. So move away, you know. And uh, they rejected it. So that's part of what happens with people, you see people that will show up and say, we, 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 we. And, and the people said, no, no, we are not. We are not the same as you. Don't join us, okay? Are you understanding? Yes. And how you know that you're not the same is that they are the ones that eventually say things like, uh, we will kill you, uh, we will this, we will that. What, if, you, if we are the same, uh, why are you attacking us behind? Why are you doing us harm? Why are you hurting us? Why? If we are on the same side, how come we are getting opposition from you? If they were together, why were they trying to stop the building of the temple? Why should it be so? And the answer is simple. They were never on your side. They wanted parts of something they thought they could benefit from. 
And that's what always happens. When people are after a personal benefit. Excuse me. When people are after personal benefit, they tell stories. But when they see that that benefit is not there, suddenly the people that seem like, oh, yeah, um, oh, we, we. It shows they were never of your mind, never. They just pretended, just acted like it. Don't let anyone bamboozle you with claims of identical pursuits. Don't. Resist it. Fight it. Oppose it. Run from it. You have to hear God first. You have to be convinced personally. You have to have confirmation that this is the Lord before you team up with anybody. Or you're going to cause great damage. <clears throat> Excuse me. To the plan of God for your life. All right, so Peter tells us, he gives us a clue about how and what. And then, let's just read verse 2, and then I'll, we'll jump verse 2 and 3, and then we'll jump to chapter 1, verse 3. By recalling, how was he stirring up their minds to wholesome thinking? By recalling what was foretold by the holy prophet. So what is the first and second book of Peter doing? Are you seeing? So it's not Peter's words. He's recalling what the holy prophets and who else? The commandments of of our Lord and Savior. Through whom? Through the apostles. Peter is one of those apostles. Paul is saying that when I'm writing to you, these things I'm writing, I'm just trying to remind you of the things, the, the prophets, or what you call Old Testament, from Moses now, said, and the things that the Lord Jesus said through, through us. So you want to know what Peter and Co. were preaching in Acts of the Apostles when he says they continued in a apostles' doctrine? This is it. They used to say it by mouth. They didn't record. Then here... He sat down and wrote out some of it. He said, oh, I'm, I'm recalling, you know, guys, I'm reminding you of the things we've been told. I'm not coming with new things, per se. I'm just telling you what has been. This is the agreement of Scripture. So someone comes up and scraps Peter or scraps the Old Testament, as it is commonly called, and scraps things and says, no, but we agree with Peter. How can you? He was just reminding us. He was just recalling for us that which has already been. Can you see this? If you don't agree, raise your hand and let me know. Ask your question. Most importantly, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. So he warns you specifically about the last days. I've told you before, the book of Peter, the books, letters of Peter, our last day books. A lot of the church has been shaped by certain thinking. All scripture is relevant, but there are times when certain aspects are more relevant, okay? Like when you want to cook and you want, you're using a cookbook, a recipe book. When you want to prepare a certain kind of food, you will look up, you go to the chapter on that, the portion of that book that describes how to make amala. It won't go to where it's show, you're shown how to make cake. Okay? So, Peter is a last day book. People must fall, you must read Peter in and out. You must know Peter and Jude, who is like just one of his chapters, Second Peter 2. You, these are last day books. We know the book of Revelation is also a last day book. And John, but the church has emphasized certain aspects of J Paul. Paul has been in charge. Paul, Paul's message, Apostle Paul's message has run things. Why? Who knows why? It's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's right. Why? 
Do you, have you heard of the phrase, the time of the Gentiles? And who is the apostle to the Gentiles? So Paul's message has held true because it was time for the Gentiles. But do you know the challenge? At the end of the age, the Bible is clear that the time of the Gentiles runs out. It says they will trample, that the sanctuary will be trampled. The courts of the sanctuary will be trampled by the Gentiles until it is up. There's something like finish, okay? There's something like an end to the time of the Gentiles. And that time has come. So when you hear it said, <coughs> First Peter 4.3, I'm showing you directly from the mouth of Peter. Read. For you have, four, three, I said, one to go. For you have spent enough time in the past, carrying out the same desires as the Gentiles, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. Because of this, they consider it strange of you not to plunge with them into the same flood of reckless indiscretion, and they heap abuse on you. Question. Is this happening? Do unbelievers look at Christians often today and heap abuse on them because they are different from them? Is that so? Is that so? Uh, it's not as much as you are saying. Uh, often Christians are doing the same things. Eh? How many Christians are abused for their Christianity? I have asked Christians directly. Say, have you been accused of being a Christian? Almost everybody I ask says no. I haven't asked many. Maybe five. Three to five. I'm praying for someone and say, ah, I'm born, I'm born again. Say, when were you accused last? Like someone is talking and saying, leave this one, this one, I'm born again, this one. And I say, no, nobody. <laughs> when nobody accuses you of being different, you think you're different, but nobody points it out. You're not different, nothing. You're the same, you blend. When you're different, they will talk about it. They cannot help but talk about it. They abuse you. Christians will abuse you. Real born again Christians will also abuse you. Say that one day. When you're not there, they'll say they think, some will tell you to your face, they think they are better than other people. You think, how many of you have heard, heard this? You think, uh, not that you did anything weird, though, but you, you think like you bother them. From that time in the examination hall, where you refused to look left or right, but you kept your eyes straight before you, like the book of Proverbs says you should. That's when they start hating you. You don't even know what you did wrong. That's when they start hating you. And then in the room, then maybe they are doing something or they are playing bad music and you plug something in your ear, they increase the volume. You're reading your Bible and just all sorts of things. So they heap abuse in front of you or behind you or boot. Go back to verse 3. You have spent enough time in the past carrying out the same desires as the Gentiles, as the Gentiles, as the Gentiles, as the Gentiles. Christians, who is he talking to? Christians. And he's telling them that you guys have behaved like the Gentiles long enough. You have behaved like the Gentiles long enough. People, Christians have behaved like Gentiles long enough. And he's telling you, I told you he's an apostle for the last days. And this is Peter. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. And now you have behaved like Gentiles, even including Gentile Christians, long enough. Now! It is time to stop. Are Christians doing debauchery? Yeah. Lust? Mm-hmm. Drunkenness? Ah. Orgies? Oh. Uh, someone told me yesterday in Lagos how someone told him 
about musicians, Christian gospel artists, some of them, before they got to perform. They take a drug, they take it in. Smoking weed. So when they come out, come on, come on, lift your hands now. They are high on weed. And you expect, oh, let's lift our hands. Let the presence of the Lord come, come, come. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God saw what he just did. Eh? But in some places, this is normal. Like without it. And we, and we heard here, we heard some people share with us some months ago how a group of ministers would drink first before they come out. Alcohol, drink it. And tell each other, Ah, today will be powerful. Yes, so spirit will move. Yes. Ah. In the vestry, then stand up straight from there and come out. Brethren, direct. And they will flow. You, come. They will flow. Full of wine, alcohol. You have spent enough time carrying out the same desires as the Gentiles, the nations. Enough time. You spent enough time. There was a time for the Gentiles and the apostle to the Gentiles' message was prominent. You see, you understand the time better. I've said this years ago, I'm repeating. It is time for last day emphasis. The season of grace is winding down. It has an end. Some of you, many of you have been told, no, there's no end. Uh, the Gentiles will always, you know. 1 Peter 2.12. Take the mic so you can be reading. Everyone can help. Huh? You're going to read this translation and then you read one other translation first. One, two, go. Conduct yourselves with such honor among the Gentiles that this slander you as evildoers. They may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day they visit us. What are they meant to see? What are Gentiles meant to see? Mm -hmm. Gentiles are meant to see your, not deeds, good deeds. The Gentiles are meant to see your behavior and give glory to God. Did Jesus say this? Yes, Matthew 5. He said the same thing. But he specifically said here, Gentiles, Unbelievers, those that are Jews, because Peter was an apostle to the Jews. Who wants to see it? Galatians 2, verse 8. Rande Gadada, Shiku Badasa. One, two, go. For the one who was at work in Peter's apostleship to the circumcised was also at work in my apostleship to the Gentiles. Do you see that? Another translation, because that does not allow us to see well. Chapter 1. Simon Peter a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received 
Who is he writing to? Those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior have received a faith as precious as ours. What does he mean? Who is he talking to and saying a faith as precious as ours? Is there a distinction being made here? And he's pointing out things. And he's pointing out things. And he's saying, listen, is in this second Peter, Abby, that we saw, that he said, let it be that the time you spent living like the Gentiles, let it be in the past. Have you seen? Like behaving how they behave. Stop. We are no more to behave like that. So I encourage everyone here. Encourage. <laughs> Do not continue in the old lifestyle. Why? The season, the time for the trampling of the courts by the Gentiles is coming to an end. You don't want to be found wanting. Hmm? Wow. Let me see. You don't want to be found wanting. You do not. Gentiles are to trample the courts only for so long. And then it's to stop. If you continue trampling the courts of our God not endlessly, the same things that were admissible or allowed The same things that you thought were, okay, but I did this and God didn't mind. Those same things will lead to great problems. Why? Because the season for it is over and you did not recognize <coughs> the change in season. You must always recognize the change in season. Hmm? I don't know if you understand. Thank you, Jesus. Um, well, it depends on the translation. Revelation 11, verse 2. But exclude the courtyard outside the temple. Do not measure it because it has been given over to the nations. nations. Goy. Nations. And they will trample the holy city for, for two months. Another translation. You see King James. Just, uh, the word, for those who don't know the word nations, what it means. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Take note of that. They are given a right over this area for an amount of time. It won't be permanent, but they do have a right. Huh? Yes. 42 months is what? Three and a half years. Okay? <clears throat> so there's an amount of time given for this to happen. And when these things happen, hmm, at the end of it, they are no longer in charge, and it will end. All right. Back to Peter. What do we therefore do? Second Peter 1. Wow. 
from verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Go back to verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is eternal life that you might know the Father and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. This is eternal life. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God, that's the Father, and of Jesus our Lord. You want more grace? You want more peace? Seek more knowledge of God and more knowledge of Jesus our Lord. That's what you should seek. That is what you should seek. You want more grace? We stand up and pray for grace. Pray. Grace, God, give me grace. Grace, grace, grace. Give us grace, God. Grace. More grace. Grace. You want grace? To increase, to multiply? You must get what? Knowledge of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. You want peace? Let's pray for peace. Pray for peace. Can I help you? Pray for knowledge of God. Pray for the knowledge of the Father and the Son. Pray for that. When that knowledge goes out. So how will you do this? Children of God. Pray for all of those who are spreading the knowledge of God and of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Pray for them to spread it more effectively. Pray for resources to reach them more quickly and abundantly. Pray for strength that they continue to spread it. Because the grace and peace you want is directly a result of the knowledge of this God. The more of this you have, the more of that you have. So why go to the end instead of going to the source? Look for the means to the end and stop emphasizing the end. Stop running and carrying plates, empty plates and cutlery and dropping on tables. Please run to the market first and buy the raw food and run to the kitchen and start cooking and stop running in directions that have no purpose. God, give us grace and peace. In this land, Lord, we lay a demand for peace. I am suggesting to all who care to hear that you should lay a demand for knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And I'm shortening it more by saying you should lay a demand for those who will speak the knowledge of God and of Jesus the Lord. I am saying that you should pray for them and then there will be grace and peace. The more people hear and know, so push the word of God. Push. Pray for those who push and carry the word out. Pray for the resources and the enablements for the word to go out automatically. All of you that are part of this house, are you more peaceful since you came here? Since you hearing knowledge and are you more peaceful at home, at work, everywhere? Yes, Are you different? Do you have more peace? Do you carry more peace and give more peace? Yes, Some of you are not sure? Yes, You're not more, a more peaceful person? You, are you more troublesome? Listen, there are usually those that get slightly more troublesome. It's demons. So when they come in contact with the power of God, the demons start kicking. Boop, 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 boop. It usually passes. If they stay under the surgeon's knife. It will be extracted. I understand that. Demons don't like that you're bringing the word because they know what will happen. However, for those who have sat a bit longer, short while, but some within a day or two, you're already different. You're more peaceful. You misbehave and you feel like saying, uh, I'm sorry, even though you don't feel like saying, but you say, it. you seek peace more. How did it come? Is it magic? Is it endless prayer? Is it fast declared 28 days? No. You had, you had just as you got more knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, his character rubbed off on you. And you became more peaceful and had more grace. Very simple. She cannot, that's how it worked for you. Why do you want it to work any different outside? Why do you think that the way to work in these builders or the next building or the guys at 
plaza or wherever it is, that is through prayer, pray, and then something will fall from the sky like this rain that was pouring, and as it comes on them, they go. <laughs> they start bowing and greeting, like senseis, sensei, sensei. That's not how it works. Never has, never will. Sending a Peter, sending a Paul, sending a James, or sending a John. Send in an, a mystery with the knowledge of God automatically. People become more peaceful and have more grace. Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge. These are the things the Lord taught me early, 2000 and 1999. He taught me, he said, listen to me. All these things you are looking for, you want your character to be godly. You're mixing it up. Go after knowing me. It will rub off on you like perfume. It is why. Those are the beginnings of my wahala with endless pray, pray. Pray about what? Sit down and listen to your father. Then take his words and come to him. Say, Lord, I have read that when the Lord Jesus was standing on the mount, he taught this. Lord, you know it's not my character. My character is that you touch me once. I touch you four times before you've blinked twice. You give me, I give you back. Lord, you were there. You saw me growing up. The jungle I came out from, you know, I was survival of the fittest. And I was the fittest in that jungle. Lord, you know. Lord, I present my hopeless case into your hand now. For I've heard that there is forgiveness with you. And there is hope. I am saying, Lord God, your character is that which is my desire. My desire. So you're praying, singing, whatever. All of it is combined in the knowledge I've collected. It is the will of my Father that I be like this. And you said if I ask anything according to your will, you hear me. Ah, Father, <laughs> I come with boldness for the righteous is as bold as a lion. This, my matter, is a righteous matter. I'm asking. And the Holy Spirit starts leading you. And maybe you have some small baggage. Maybe there's someone you talk to that makes you angry all the time, helps you be angry. He contributes, like... Ususu, donations, thrift, savings of anger in your life span. You sack him from the association, you sack him. And you add people who are happy. You send a message, say, don't talk to me about these things anymore. You pray first, say, Father, help me cut away from this person who is always sending me things that make me angry. Father, direct and guide me, lead me. Help me if it's possible, let it be peaceful. If it's not, please just help me in the name of Jesus. Amen. That very same day you hear, so and so left the group. Find out later that they stole the phone. But not your own. God has intervened. Uh, God does all these things. So you pray, you pray for more knowledge of the Father and the Son. <coughs> Abi, you wanted more grace. Sometimes you pray for grace and peace, and he answers it by changing these things, and you complain. But other times, Better still, as you be grow, eh? just ask for the thing that results in it. Go to the source. Learn the, ask for specifics. Holy Father, I'm asking to know what you say or think about this. I am asking to see and know this. I am ask, as you do this, your grace and your peace will increase. And you will, like many of you have shared in testimonies, you look at yourself and not recognize you. Grace and peace came through the knowledge of God and of our Savior. This is the method. The method is not shouting and praying endlessly. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm going on a seven day fast. My character, oh God. Did you open your Bible to say, no. Pray. This is not a time to be reading. Pray. 
Shut up! I pray you, shut up. Open the book, for the word of God is living and powerful. It is sharper than any sword, any two-edged sword. It will pierce in. It will start separating, dividing your soulish nature. This nonsense, yama yama, that you have accumulated from your jungle. It will separate it from the spirit man that you have become. To separate, to divide, to, it will show you, ah, no, when you do this one, that's not me. Ah, no, that's not my spirit. Say, ah, I felt it was righteous indignation. He said, mm -mm, it was fleshly anger. The wrath of man, it does not walk the righteousness of God. It was not me. Eh, uh -huh. yes. Ah, okay, so, ah, hey, I'm sorry. Oh, that's embarrassing, I'm sorry. See, now you're praying. Now we are talking. Now you're practicing Christianity. Now you are getting on the path of constant victory. Other than that, you float around endlessly. There are many people. I'm born again. I came out um, 2012, 12, 12, 13, maybe December, January. Yeah, that's why I gave my life to Christ. Wow, me, I thought it's two days ago because your character, your character looks like someone that got saved two days ago. And what, how is that typical? <laughs> Nothing. As you've been there. I am shocked to hear you're saved. Because you do not sit down and soak yourself. It's through the knowledge of God. The more you see him, the more you become like him. As you behold him, you're changing to his likeness. From one level of glory to another. Second Corinthians 3 says, as you behold him, as you behold him, as you behold him, as you behold the Father, you become more like him. As you behold the Son, you become more like him. As you behold Therefore, your job is to behold. How do you behold? The glory of God is revealed in the face of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. The face of Jesus. So you look at the face of Jesus. You look at that which reveals his mind and his heart. You look at the scriptures of our God. Or you kneel down in prayer and go shine in Jesus. You shine to, and you look on the Lord. You gaze on him in the place of prayer and the spirit of worship and adoration. And the beauty of his nature begins to change you. It rubs off on you. You don't even know how. You come out and you're feeling tender about everyone. Just start liking people you normally don't like. You, you're trying to feel angry. Who has experienced this? You're trying to feel angry at annoying people. During that time when you came, you, you, you can't feel anger. You're looking for the anger. You can't find it. Who knows what we are talking about? Eh? You cannot find the anger. Yes, because of who you have been with, his perfume has rubbed off on you. His nature. If we spent more time, we would even be more amazing, gentle and kind. Because we don't spend enough time, we become hard and harsh. So if we will continually be with the king, someone will swing a sword at you, just does. Gently. Not the one that, eh? He swung his sword. And before he has finished, the, inner, the momentum has carried him forward. You stab him twice in the back. <laughs> I just drops dead. Well, you too, you're a warrior. You cannot be taking anything. They swing at you, just go. There's this guy, this guy, he try me, he try me, not sabbing me, <laughs> he never hear of me. Ah. Go ask, go ask, ask for spetsnaz. <laughs> now, this is not physical, I'm talking about mentally. The person said, you gave him, he began to say something, and to yeah. Say you, <laughs> I should expose you. <laughs> See, guys, it's not all this, I mean, I don't believe in your hypocrisy. Do you know this guy? Slept with animals. This guy slept with animals. This guy slept with dogs and cats. Ask him if I'm lying. Ask him. 
Is that not two stabs? Is he not dead? He's finished. In the community of the brethren, he's dead. You don't die. You wiped him out. Who, who, would, who can answer that? Like, who would, can you talk back? Who is going to talk back? Dead people don't talk. You're dead. <laughs> You're finished. Who is talking back? Nobody is talking. Everybody does their face like that and goes different ways. <laughs> you walk away. That's you. But it's nice. Russian special forces. <laughs> Horrific evil. But if you have been with the Lord, you swing, you dodge. Say, no now, why? I've been with you all this time. Why are you coming as though you're coming to arrest a thief? Don't be Peter. Peter just young. I've told you he was not aiming for the ear. Nobody goes around saying, set, set. <laughs> Nobody does that. Just went, shang. The guy went, shang. <laughs> The angel just bent the guy enough, control Peter's sword, your ear come out. Can you imagine the difference if Jesus had to join back the head? <laughs> Listen to my question. Who would have arrested him? Which crucifixion? If you were one of the soldiers, would you crucify? You see person head robe, person carry him. <laughs> Put them back. You go crucify him. That whole group of people have resigned from the army that day. So I'm not doing it again. Master, we worship. <laughs> I'm just explaining why the angels had to be involved in controlling that sword. Just a quick, a quick and ready miracle. Let's just, because this Malchus, we'll use him. I like how they did it in the Passion of the Christ. You saw how stunned he looked. Even after they joined the ear again, you know? I think that's what happened. The guy was like, I lost that. What just happened here? I saw my ear on the ground. <laughs> He's checking, he, he did join well. <laughs> if it was his head. The time of the Gentiles is coming to an end, people of God. Are you understanding me? Yes. yes. The time for us to trample the courts of God's house anyhow, behaving anyhow, no rules, no order, no organization, came into the house of God and just did anyhow. That time is coming to an end. Whatever additional fulfillment will come about these words, I'm not saying they won't be, might not be specific three and a half years of this and that. But it's better, you understand, many times a year is multiplied times. Some 70, okay, 70 times each of that. So there's all these maths in scripture that sometimes we are not sure till it's fulfilled. Then God shows you, say, hey, this is that. This event in 1990-something is the fulfillment of that. I was calculated all the way back from then till now. But if you go using exact numbers, exactly three and a half years, you go into error. You go into specific errors. Why? Because God speaks how he does. Say 70 years, the prince. And instead of you're multiplying 70 times 70, you go multiplying 70 and some... You need to even multiply sometimes 70 and then times a year each, 300. You don't multiply properly. Then how can you know how to multiply? These are things the Holy Spirit must teach you because it's never fully exact. It's exactly the same. Sometimes there's a variation. Sometimes one day means something else. We've had words in this house for people and it's had three weeks and it happened exactly three months later, exactly. So the weeks were months. Sometimes we have days and it's weeks. Sometimes it's years, months and it's years. So it's why you must be like, why does God talk like that? He talks like that so that you will walk by faith and not by sight. So you will need him per time. You need to be with him per time. And he tells you, eh, this is that time. And eh, that time has come. It's time for this thing. Like Lord, when he'll show it to you in his word. The spirit dimension when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, 
And Peter says, this is that which was prophesied by Joel. How could he have known? Holy Spirit told him. Okay? The first set of leaders in this house. The Lord told me, it's from Acts of the Apostles. He said, take seven men for seven days. And I sent I said, wow, who are the seven leaders? You know, and I got eight names. And I wonder what to do. I said, okay, I pray. One of them that is not among will not come, will drop. I mean, people were in Ebo, in Imo State, different places. He got it, but they scattered around wherever they were. Eight people showed up. They, before they showed up, I said, God, how? He showed, I, <laughs> I didn't search you. I don't know how. No time to explain. Showed me from the book of Zechariah. He said, there will be seven shepherds, even eight principal men. I hope I'm not mixing it up. Principal men. Seven, even eight. I've never noticed that. I'm like, what does this mean? And yours truly, eight people showed up. He said, seven, even eight. God talks like that. He does this God thing. Seven, even eight. I went like, wow. Wow. Seven shepherds, even eight principal men. And that's how I you know, I knew that God picked them, what we was now referred to in this church group as the eight. Yeah. So God talks like that. Different ways confirming his counsel, his mind. All that. So there's the spirit's specific leading per time about specific things. You don't go saying, no, that's not what the... Be I told you, it's not context. It's contexts. Scripture, God speaks on contexts. There's a context, long-term, prophetic, worldwide implication. And then there's a personal thing that he uses to speak to you in one day. Like before I came here, what was he tell? What did he tell? Isaiah 55, verse 5. Surely you will summon a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you will run to you. For the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel has bestowed glory on you. Seek, give another translation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Next verse. Verse 7. Take note of Isaiah 55, verse, from verse 5 to 7. Let the wicked man forsake his own way and the unrighteous man his own thoughts. So you have your own way and your own thoughts, right? He said you should forsake it. Forsake your way and your thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion and to our God for he will freely pardon. Seeing that? Let him return. And then he goes on to tell you about his thoughts, not being your thoughts or ways, his ways. Okay? Go back to verse 5. Give me another translation. another so you will summon a nation you do not know and nations who do not know you will run to you are these gentiles didn't the jews know themselves this was isaiah prophesying the coming of the gentiles are you hearing oh yes he was telling them that they will summon a nation they don't know there will be a summoning of people they are not aware of there will be a summoning. This is what God, our God, can do. And it actually applies to may, many here more than you know. There will be a summoning. God would use just read it from verse 3 and 4. And this is the Lord Jesus, this is Paul, this is us. Look at us, prophesied, verse 3 and 4. Incline your ear and come to me. When, when you incline your ear, what does it mean? So the next line says, listen so that your soul may live. Is this person talking or listening to someone else talking? Who, is, who are they listening to? Who are we listening to? The Lord, obviously now. I hope someone didn't say the person. Is the Lord, Abby? Is the 
You don't see the capital M. Incline your ear and come to me. Come to me. Then after you have come, do what? Listen. Why? So that your soul may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant. Eh? I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My loving devotion promised to David. People, David was long dead. He said, I will do this. But how did it start? You inclined your ear and you listened. You came and then you listened. Note it down. First, incline. Turn your ear. Do you know what I mean? Think, have you seen dogs? Their ear go up and turn left and right like, like a solar, like a satellite dish. Have you seen them turn their ear here and here? Yeah, they are scanning. Good. That's how we should be. Mare sobra. I have the impression, I don't know, I may be wrong, that we might close soon, so pay attention. Listen, this way. Incline your ear. Many people never incline their ears, so they can never come. First, incline your ears, child of God. First point. Be tuned in habitually towards where the words of God are going forth. Be a human being that is tuned towards that direction. Please. Please. For you, for me, for us all, for the world. Be inclined towards God. Two. After you have tuned and scanned and gotten the direction where he is, do what? Come to me. Go towards him. Move in that direction. Go there. Go there. Don't just incline like many people do. Ah, no, I heard, I heard that preacher. Yes, he speaks true to sound, sound guy like this. Sound guy. Eh, have you gone since then? No. No, I, I have my church, too. I, I have my church. Clown. Clowns everywhere, all over Nigeria and beyond. Clowns. It used to be when I heard anybody. I remember hearing Dwayne Sherry first. How much money did a student have? <laughs> All my money. It was a bookshop. Dwayne Sherry's Ministries, obviously, they used to give out free cassette tapes. Before discs, all that, cassette tapes. They would give it out free. This man would sell them for 30, 30 naira, which is fine by me. No, a, to buy a proper cassette tape, then maybe it would be 150 or something or 200, but he was selling 30, 30 naira. Now, I don't know how he got it. Maybe all, there are people who write to ministries, Nigerians, your brothers, they must be. They write to ministries, collect, look for ministries that give out free books, cassettes. Huh? When I was a fellowship president in this University of Uyo, we did that. We wrote to Hands for Christ in the Law Students Fellowship, when I was the president, we wrote to them, I think. I think I was president then. And they sent. I went to Worry and carried it. Went to Worry and came back with a carton of books. And we put it in our fellowship library and we had books. By the way, we should look if there are such people. Just that you, you check the author first, so because there are books that are poison. Uh, I was once driving on the road and I saw two of our brethren coming out of a bookshop to, to, with books, going to read, to be like pastor. Right? God is good. Though. Who was with me that day? I don't even know how. How were we on that road at all? Ought to have been here. Diverted to Banya. I remember. I can't remember who was with me, but some people were with me. I, maybe my wife. I think so. I think we just came from visiting someone that I put to bed on a clinic on that road. As we pass like this, I think I missed the way or something. See, I think save your coffee, I was there on the phone. They called him books. And I didn't just say hi. I said, hey, let me see. And they came, I look. <laughs> Christian, poison, poison, Christian. I just separated the wheat from the chaff. <laughs> Can't return these ones. Don't read this one. This one does not believe in Holy Spirit. This one does not believe in this. Uh, just give back that one. Collect this other guy's own. Uh -huh. 
there are people, they go around. That one was, he bought the books. This one, people write. Then when the books come, they sell them. So they pretend. Meanwhile, those people say clearly, this is not for sale. Written very large on it. The Nigerian bro, the, eh? Not for, eh? The boy, now my chop is this. I don't know if it's the top. Hi. Judgment day will be bloody. Oh. Hi. Hi. The lack of fear of God, eh? He, what's my own? I don't care. I'm hungry. So I remember going and buying them every time. I'll tell them when you have it, tell me. I'll go, there'll be three or five. I'll buy all. I'll not have my money run, I'll buy more. That's how you incline your ear. You heard one thing. The person is sound. Why on earth don't you give up everything? I was asking the core members in the Lauren. Why? I, I said, will you will whatever you think you want, will you be willing to spend money, you know, and all? Will you be willing to buy a meal for someone that will escort you to go for evangelism? That will be caught, that normally goes for evangelism, so they will call you. Will you be willing to spend 300 now or 400 to buy them a plate of food? He said, don't worry, I'll buy it for you when we come. Because he said, let's go and preach. He said, I'm tired. He said, I'm hungry. He said, no, when we come back, we'll eat. He said, yeah, you pay for it. Yes, no problem. Are you willing to spend your money? Say, no, I'm trying to save for you. are a clown. I don't trust anybody that doesn't put money in what he claims to believe in. You're a joker. Just leave. Stop. You're not real. When people want something or love something, they will spend their money on it. It is natural. Stop saying, no, 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 if I could. You're lying. And God knows you're lying. Even you don't know, but you're lying. When you want something, you uh, uh, when you want a new wig, when you want a new pair of shoes, when you want a cloth, what have you not done? When you want school fees, it shows in what you do. Say, well, why didn't you come for the church meeting? I didn't have transport. Go ahead, sit down. When you wanted to go for that, your friends, not even your friend, that wedding or that burial, how come you, you seem not to think about it? you somehow ended up at the occasion. How come you always end up in occasions that you want to end up in? How do you do it? Say, no, I couldn't. Sunday morning, what happened? What happened that day? What happened that day? Nothing happened that day. Desire drives people. And the person that will not spend on his or her desires is not hungry. You must hunger and thirst after righteousness. How many of you have been hungry and thirsty for something and you walked an ungodly distance to go and get it? You saved an ungodly amount. What I mean is you've been broke for four days and someone now gave you a certain amount and you saved it and went and got it. How do you have the ability to do things like that, that well? That's what desire, hunger does to a human being. So when you see it's not there, it's not there, you are not hungry. First, agree with the truth. Kneel down and say, God, forgive me. I am not hungry. Please make me hungry. Please. And to help you be hungry, hang around those who are hungry. Hunger rubs off. Huh? Mm. Hunger rubs off. Like they say children, when children eat. So Hepzibah and uh, uh, Edikan. And Hepziba came to see me yesterday in Lekki, where I was with my friend, you know. And they were there playing. There were children in the house. And next to Hepziba, I didn't even notice first. But I, first, eh? the guy is eating. Huh? He's sitting there eating by herself. You know, normally she doesn't do too much eating by herself. Huh? Uh, typically force fed. She's eating. And the mother was saying, yes, when there are other children, she likes that's how it have it rubs off go around the kind of people you want to be like hunger will be stirred up do you remember peter said i'm writing to you to stir up yes wholesome thinking so stay around those who do certain things it will rub off on you you will desire the same things they desire because you're in the same space 
But when you stay around people who desire what you shouldn't be desiring, you develop a hunger for that too. So limit your desires to only that which is good. Is this clear? This is how it's done. One of the ways it's done. When you have inclined your ear, come. Come. I remember doing Sherry's messages because I would go to that bookshop over and over again, you know, buy, have a little money. Buy, pick 10, pick 20, pick all. Just pack all. Some I'll say, I, I, keep this one for me. I don't have the money. I'll come and, you know, which money did I have? Where is the space for chicken? Where? Where is the time? Where is the ability to buy suya? How? Where? How? Biscuits? How? When this cassette? There are six more. Not possible. The money goes there. And then you eat, oh, the joy of holding those cassettes. And listening to them one by one. You look forward to it. But when you're full of junk, no hunger. Nobody that is full of junk is hungry. When you're full of nothing, hunger, no, they catch you. When you're... When, 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 you're, when you have a proper emptiness given to you by the Father, yes, that's good. Is that clear? So, we all must determine that our lives should be a life of hunger and thirst. For the knowledge of God, now verse uh, the next thing says, you incline your ears, then you came, and then you listened. And what is the result? Your soul will live. So how does it say in James 1? Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Is it the same thing? Do you notice that's James? This was Isaiah. He's telling you the same thing. You inclined, you came. It takes humility to come. It takes humility to go to God, to sit, to pursue after, to seek after. When you pay the price, when you hear some stories of people traveling over a long distance to go and see a man of God and God does something for them, many times God is responding to the hunger. Do you understand? Why do many people have nothing happening in them, their lives? They have no hunger. God promised to fill those who hunger and thirst. Well, you know, no, you know, no hunger. He should feel what? You're full of yourself already. What should he put inside you? There's no space. You're full of junk but empty yourself desire only that which is good your soul will live your nefesh will live and he will make with you a covenant and which covenant the one he made with David verse 4 behold I have made him a witness to the nations what was David a witness to the nations, a leader and commander of the peoples. Therefore, what are we meant to be? A witness to the nations. This is not the same covenant. A leader and commander of the people. How many of you want to be leaders and commanders of peoples? How many of you want to be a witness to the nations, to the Gentiles, to those who don't know the Lord? Which includes at this time Jews, because they don't know the Lord. This is not blood Gentiles. This is not blood Jews. These are spiritual conditions. So whether Jew or Gentile, there's a category called Gentiles now. The nations, we do not know God. We are the holy nation, according to Peter. A royal priest, we are a holy nation, called to show forth, to be witness to him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He promised us this, but we must listen, we must turn. All right? Verse 5. And he now told you what will happen when he makes that covenant with you. You will summon a nation that you don't know. You summon them. People you don't know will come. 
People you don't fire away. They will start turning to the Lord. They will come to the Lord. You will summon them. You remember you're a commander, a leader of people. So online, in person, wherever, you will summon and they will respond and come to the Lord. Because you inclined your ears and came to the Lord. Are you seeing how that works? You want to be used by God to bring salvation and deliverance to many? Then pay the price of you carrying yourself to the Lord. Let him save your soul, that your soul might live. If your soul does not live, you cannot go out and bring life to others. Are you seeing this? They, you will summon a nation you don't know, and nations who do not know you will run to you. They will run to you. People that don't know you yet, they will hear of you and they will run to you. Like Paul magneting the Jew Gentiles and Peter the Jews. This will happen. For the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, has bestowed glory on you. So what's the result of your sitting with the Lord and hearkening and listening to his words? Glory will be bestowed on you. Can you see this? Again, if I say, let's pray. How many of you want to walk in God's glory? Season of glory 2022. You jump up and you say, God, your glory. Let men see your glory in my life. Some assault, catch wheels, everything you will do. What is the key to his glory being bestowed on you? Coming, sitting. People of God, we are going to come and we are going to sit. Do you agree? <clears throat> That's the season we are in. While we are putting out the word, remember, we are to summon the nations. Huh? Yes, sir. yes, so we must keep putting out content, truth, written, audio, visual, every format. That's the battle. That's the war. That is what we are commanded by our God to do now. As we, on a personal level, sit with him, that's going to be an emphasis going forward. We are going to sit with the Lord. We are going to listen to the Lord. We are going to pay attention to him. We are going to heed his counsel. We are going to listen to his words. Your morning devotions, night, whenever, we are going to have to sit. You're going to, so we have Fridays here, and this is almost all we have apart from Wednesdays, you know, but we must heed. Don't just hear it, you must do it. Indeed. Let's be <clears throat> intentionally much more attentive to our God. This is that time where you must read through chapters and chapters of the Bible. You must take notes. If the Holy Spirit is emphasizing something, you must go and study it. You must do it. So strengthen your brothers and sisters and go out and obey this. If you put anything online as a church, comply with it. If they say today, everyone, let's read this or that, just do it. We may not, but I'm saying if we do. If we don't, make sure you and your shepherd, you've worked out something, but make sure you are, because it is time to respond to him. I'm recalling that probably the last message I preached here involved the same thing I'm saying about Mary Ma Mary of Bethany sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to him. This one thing. So it is absolutely necessary. But remember, it is this method. You can see why you came to listen and your soul lived was so you could go and summon the nations that the same will happen to them. This is true Christianity. Those who don't understand it go and sit at the Lord's feet and never want to stand up. That was me. You're not allowed. You cannot do it. Let me advise you, if you don't want the Lord to take away a personal study life from you, just obey and be giving out and walk on say, or you'll be weak. God just take away. You're like, uh, this will last for two weeks and it will last for two years. You will not believe it. You know, if you haven't backslidden, you're not living in sin, but he, he has taken like, oh, okay, so it's only you that, watch. And he says, do unto others as you want done to you. You don't want to give others out. So take yours. I've advised you. Don't say I didn't tell you. Five, verse 5, 6 and 7. 
So he now tells us, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. So he tells you what to do. He clarifies it. Seek him. Why does he say while he may be found? Gentiles, nations, seek him while he may be found. You and me, we must seek him while he may be found. We must call on him while he's near. Why? Because he's not near all the time. Have you read the book of Psalm 19? Like a mighty man running his race, the sun in its course. This is how the Lord operates. He comes and he passes. He's not near anymore to those people. He's near to these ones now. And then he passes. Do you know what this is? This is what happened to the Jews. He passed, closed. They wasted time. They didn't seek him how he was. So he passed to the Gentiles. And I'm informing you Gentiles that he's going to pass again. Are you understanding me? So he says, seek him while he's near. When he's passing by you, seek him. Seek him. Grab him. Draw close. Ah, I mean, yo, I'm looking for a church where people really, I can grow. I have heard, I, I heard of that, your church. It's not that when I came to you, I blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, 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 I'm in Abuja, you know, and I've been looking for opportunity. You had, the Lord was near. Did you seek him while he was near? Did you seek him while he was near? When he's near, seek him. While he may be found, seek him. Don't do, uh, well, it's okay. Let's not appear too desperate. Uh, be desperate. The woman with the issue of blood, how many years? Twelve years her life was going. Her soul, the life is in the blood. And the Lord was around and she sought him to the crowd. She didn't wait. When he has traveled far away, she now looked for transfer money. That's what many people do. When the Lord is near, where opportunities are at your fingertips, you joke with it. And then the thing moves far away. Not that it's no longer in existence, but the price you need to pay to get to it is so much higher. Do you understand this? And finally, verse 7 said, forsake your ways, change your thinking. Why? You can't seek him. He says when you do this, you have compassion and you freely pardon. Is this clear? Is this clear? Yes, sir. I'm ending with that Second Peter 1 verse 4. We've read up to verse 3. Can put three and four. So the, you can see the connection. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. How do we get everything? How do we get everything we need for life and godliness? <laughs> through the through knowledge. Have you seen it? I don't need to preach it again. Knowledge is the key to all sorts of things. Now, verse 4, prominent, make it prominent. He called us by his own glory, excellence. excellence. Verse 4 says, through these, through what? What is these? The knowledge of himself. He has given us what? Precious and magnificent promises. Are you seeing what is in his word? Precious and magnificent promises. So that through them you may become partakers. Everyone. If you got saved today, listen. If you got saved 10 years ago, listen. He didn't say through age. He didn't say through money, offerings. He said through the knowledge of the one who has called us, through the knowledge of the Father and the Son, through the knowledge of the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Through his knowledge. A power is released. 
And by this power, this grace, this enablement, this empowerment, we have everything that we need for life and godliness. We also have precious and magnificent promises. Those are the things you need for life and godliness. Huh? Precious and magnificent promises. So that through them you may become, read, partakers of the divine nature. Divine nature is God's nature. So as you are beholding the Son, the Father and the Son, your nature, as I said earlier, begins to change. Till you are of their nature. So when you stand and look at other people and say, wow, look at how God is walking through that one. Look at how gentle this one is. Look at how beautiful this one's character is. Look at how wonderful this person is. They are just partaking in the divine nature. He has told you how to get your own. He calls them precious and magnificent promises. Every promise in scripture about what is available to you is accessible. But first, you must know them now. First, you must know them. If you don't know them, even if you see it on the street, you pass it. Because you don't know. Why do we study the world? I'm giving you a major reason why we... Why these books compiled as one? The Bible, the 66 books here. Why this book is so important and you need to consume it is because these promises which are precious and magnificent are found here. As his power, the spirit of truth, which you received, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you shall be my witnesses. The capacity to go out is only connected to the capacity to sit down and listen. Yes? As you sit and listen, whether it is to a sermon that has been preached like this, whether it's your own personal Bible study, all the different ways God speaks to us and to you. As you pick a book, a Christian book, or something we've published, and you don't just look at it carelessly, but you carefully chew on it, peruse it, you will find fantastic, magnificent promises. When you find them, it enables you to become a partaker of his divine nature. There is no becoming like his divine nature without the knowledge of the nature. Those are the great and precious promises. Can you understand this? Now that you have escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Is that what they told the Gentiles? Is that what he was talking earlier on in Second Peter? Is that what the same thing he said? Did he talk about this? He said that your past is enough, that you should no longer be. So do you understand that set aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness? And then you receive with meekness. Are you saying that while one is to come in, the other must go out? Have I shown you in enough places just today that you can't have junk in you while also bringing the good? Something must go. Amen. Amen. I'd like us to stand to our feet. Is today Bible study? Why are there questions? Still stand to your feet. A situation where people are taking you for granted and insulting you. Are we not to retaliate? Retaliate. <laughs> that as the Holy Spirit. You want to retaliate, have you? You haven't read Revelation chapter 12, or Romans 12, where it says you should not revenge, that vengeance is the Lord's, you should, he will repay. Huh? How can you and God be in charge of vengeance? Leave that position is occupied, move away. Because in my former church, um, 
the we are under we are we are building under this building project in Lagos, and then um, this Agbero they will just come and start collecting money and start scattering, you know what we are doing. So the man now quoted the, um, the story of Nehemiah, how he how yes. the people there they started fighting against the enemy. So he said that we should also carry our shovels and you know start fighting them back. What if they killed you? Will you be here now? <laughs> they you so they, you you fought them back. Yes, we actually fought them back. And and what happened? They left. They run. They ran. They ran away. Yes, sir. How many were they? They were many, but since we are more than them, because we are children. So why didn't you just chase them away since? You didn't hit anybody with a speed, did you? You I just... Did not, I did not, but they, other, other did. they hit them? Yes. Did they wound someone? Yes. The people didn't come back with things? No. You're lucky now. <laughs> Is there no police in the town? The police came later. What was wrong with you just passing to call the police first, first? Uh, just to fight with shovel. What if someone is hit and they die? Thank God you're here. I am not saying that there are not times to confront people, but that doesn't mean you resort to physical violence. But I'm neither am I saying if you walk up now, you gotta start beating my daughter. You walk up another and I pass. What I probably won't ask you, especially if you're not listening. I will remove you first, then we will discuss what happened. Okay. So depending on the... So if you're causing present harm to someone, <coughs> we are not saying that you can never defend yourself. So someone comes to take this thing. I'm not saying you can't collect it back. But uh, that, those reports, that was a happy situation. That story you told, just thank God that it was happy. Because it could end up dead that only works sometimes even that man that said that thing there are situations where it will not work they will be dead then who will now do that thing you are fighting for i'm sorry but i'm a bit confused i thought the word gentiles is like an umbrella name for non-jews but the passage you read in peter used the phrase as the gentiles i thought i answered it now I have said that you were behaving as Gentiles. And he gave you how the Gentiles behave sinfully. What's confusing you? The phrase Gentiles is also used to refer to worldly people without fear of God. Because Jews did not openly do orgies or do all those things you see there. Do you understand? But Gentiles were openly sinning. That passage is saying don't be an open sinner like the Gentiles. Jews are half Pharisees, hypocrites, Sadducees, unbelieving skeptics, you know, and Herodians, political, inclined people. But the blatant list of shameless, lost, drunkenness, partying, detestable idolatry, the Jews don't come out plainly and live like this. It's Gentiles that live like this. Is this clear? I hope you understand me. Jews are off, but they are off not like this. They are not holding a bottle, you know, and uh, walking, no. They may be inside their room hiding an addiction, but debauchery, lost. Go to Gamka class. We've explained just most of this uh, in the last series of classes. All right. Our prayer point, first of all, 15 seconds. Thank the Lord for the things you've heard and learned. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for truth. We thank you for life. We thank you for light. We thank you for illumination, discernment, precision. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, Lord, we praise you, Lord, today. Father, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Take away our shame. Give us strength to the feet of the lame. Cover us with your bow. 
brought us into your arms. You thought I had to war, you thought I think us to fight. Show us more on the way to the light, oh God. You show us. Now, this scripture tells us, or this song, he says, it takes away our shame. Blessed be your name. He took away our shame. Covered us. And for this, Father, we are saying we are grateful. We are very grateful that we are not as the Gentiles all around, shamelessly misbehaving as many of us were in times past. Thank you, Lord God, that our lives are given to praise you and our desires have been remarkably transformed. Just raise your hands and tell Lord, thank you. Your desires have been remarkably transformed. Yes, no? Oh, if it has, tell him thank you. Wonderful God, wonderful God. There was a time lust will burn you like fire. This is Friday night. You will be consumed with thoughts of wickedness. Father, we are grateful. Blessed be your name. Amen. I want us to ask the Lord, according to the things we just saw, that he will show us exceeding great and precious promises. He will pour out his power on us in a fresh way to sit down with the scriptures, with his spirit, this power will reveal to us exceeding magnificent promises. When you see it, you will be changed. Ask him. Let's take it stage by stage. 30 seconds each. First prayer point. Lord, teach me how to incline my ear. Come on. Father, I ask for you. Help me to incline my ear. To a person, to a thing. When I'm around a place or I see a book, let me know what to incline my ear to. Deliver me from distractions and inclining my ears towards useless sounds. There are many sounds in the earth and none of them is without signification. Lord, help me know the ones that are significant according to you. Help me know in the name of Jesus. Help me know in the name of Jesus what to incline my ear to. Help me know how to incline my ear. Help me know whom to incline it to. Rapakati sata arigadusa. Help us know in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Second prayer point, when you incline your ears, then you come. Ask the Lord to help you know how to come to him. Coming. You might say, I've been a Christian, I've been coming. Ask him for more grace to come. Show me how. Show me the times I don't come. All those times you call me and I refuse to come. Lord, show me. Show me, Lord God. Help me come. Help me come. For many of us, it's become very hard to come. You plan to come to sit down with the Lord, to pray, to study, to find him, but you don't. You simply don't. Lord God, help us again to come to you. Help us sit at your feet. Help us come to a place of rest. Help us settle down. Help us come, good God. Great God, good God, mighty Father. Enablement comes from you. Capacity is yours. Mighty Jesus. Mighty God. Thank you. Father, we ask for angels to help us come. Amen. Lord God, you're the one that draws men. Your word says that no one can come to the Father or to the Son except the Father draws him. Oh Lord, please draw us to the Son. Amen. Drag us to the Son. Amen. Please drag us to the Son. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
some of you are not praying with passion. You think you want us to shout, then you, you, you pray. Better pray with passion. It's brief, but mean what you're praying. Next prayer point. When you come, you have to listen to him. Listening is not hearing. Listening is obeying. Ask the Lord. I want to listen to everything you command. No more do I want to be the one who does not hear what is said. Hearing but not doing. Lord, help me to listen. Help me to listen. Help us to listen. Help us to focus, listen, and respond. To hear and obey. That's what it means to listen. To hear and to obey. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Then now let's pray. He promised he would give us a covenant of David to be a witness. To be a witness. Someone asked me in the car, very car I was coming back from Port Harcourt. He said, Say, are you a witness? When I, when I went to start preaching, he said, are you a witness? And I laughed and I went in my mind, yes, I'm a witness. But that only confused them. I said, you mean Jehovah's Witnesses? He said, yes. I said, no. I want us to ask, the promise to David was that we are to be leaders and commanders of people. That's what Paul was when he entered the place. That's what Peter was. I want us to tell the Lord, to be leaders and commanders, we need to be witnesses. But to be witnesses, we must have been with you. And our souls must be living. We must have received your word humbly. Tell the Lord, please, everything it will take. Break into two pieces. First prayer point. Lord, every overflow of wickedness, filthiness, James 1, therefore set aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness. Huh? All impurities, put it there. All impurities, all everything that needs to go, let it go. Moral filth and every expression of evil. Ask the Lord to help you get rid of it. You are to get rid of it, but ask him to help you. Lord, help me. Let me know how to get rid. Show me the things I must get rid of. Lord, show me the things I must get rid of. Reveal to me the things I must be rid of in the name of Jesus. Help me identify. Help me see. Help me know. Help me comprehend. Help me, good God. Help us know. Help us see. Help us clearly be free of all that corrupts and defiles. Help us, good God. Good God, mighty Savior. Show us how. Show us what. Show me what. Show me how. Show me where. Show me with whom. Show me, oh Lord, my God. Show us, great God. Show us all moral field, every expression of evil. Let us be free and humbly accept the word. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I ask that you do this. In the name of Jesus, every form of field that has come to reside within any life here that we don't want. Say, I renounce, I renounce all moral filth and every expression of evil in the name of Jesus. Be gone from my life. Amen. Father, as that you hear the prayer of your children, Say, I stand the things we've decreed, made boys as we have spoken. Let us be completely free. Amen. So we can accept the word humbly that is to be planted in our souls. So final prayer points, and as we are praying, first, if this is your first time, come, let me pray for you once. Yeah, uh, you know, I've never prayed for you before, since whenever you came. Come. Everyone, you're praying. Lord, I want your words to be planted. I humble myself. I humble myself. Humility is what enables the word to be planted. Pride is what does not allow words to be planted. Father, 
Father, I ask, humbly I ask, that your words be planted, your words be planted, your words be planted, your words be planted inside here, planted clearly, planted distinctly. Ask his words to come to you early in the morning, late in the evening. His words will come, his words will come. I want to pray. I to see and ears to hear for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. See myself. Let the light of God shine. Rest upon you. swept away. Let there be light. Let there be light. your hands everyone in the name of Jesus amen father we ask for an outpouring of grace to sit at your feet to learn to study to hear you we want our souls to live where there's been weakness and fainting in our souls souls live in the name of Jesus father we receive grace partnerships accountability and everything we need to go back to the word, to go back to personal Bible study, to be found in the face of our Lord and our God. 
from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. We look to you and we are saved. Oh, ye ends of the earth. We look to you, our God, Savior, Master, King. We look to you. We receive the power to do your will. Oh, Lord, we pray. Amen. We receive power to do your will. Oh, Lord, we pray. Amen. Give us the power to do your will. Oh, Lord, we pray. Amen. You have an offering, take it. Some of you may have given it already by transfer. You have an offering to give. Let me just pray for that. The announcement is that to, we are here on Sunday. Uh, well, those that are here, invite people, lead people to the Lord. Tell people, uh, be a witness. That's what you were called to be. This is the covenant he had with David. You've seen it. It's not to sit on a throne. It's to be a witness for them to look and see. This is a man that knows God. You're a witness. That's why David was conquering everywhere. So you are meant to go out and conquer. That's the same through Christ. You're more than conquerors. That's what David was. He defeated every enemy. He fought the battles of the Lord. You can do the same. Every single one of you here can do the same. We can fight the battles of our God and win them and give God pleasure. And the Lord delights in us. Little by little as you obey what he tells you. That's the strategy that will conquer every enemy. And that's what we have prayed. And since we've asked according to his will, we know he'll hear us. Amen? Amen. Boldness <coughs> is ours. Amen. Why? Because the righteous is as bold as a lion. When you act contrary to that, it's not because God has not given you. It's because you have rejected your your unbelief is rejecting that which is yours already. But if you act like someone who knows what they have, things will fall in place too. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every offering that has been given. Thank you for everyone that is being given now. I ask that it be received for the glory and praise of your name. I ask that you help us to put our treasures where our heart claims to be. Amen. Help everyone here offer not just finances, but everything that is needed to accomplish the will of God Amen. in their sphere of authority Amen. and operations. Thank you. Thank you. Replenish and multiply Amen. even more and more. We are grateful for all the financial miracles We've enjoyed the last week or two. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for doing more than we ask for or imagine. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing Father. We ask for even more reasons to give you praise. Blessed be your name. As the basket goes around, let's just sing that song one more. Blessed be your name. Taken away our shame Given strength to the feet of the lame Covered us with your heart Brought us into your right You are worthy, yes, you 
Your children go. Show us what we were made for. Let your words become spirit and life to every single one of us. Wonderful things will be spoken of. As you sit with the word, the scriptures will open up to you. It will open up to you. Yes, God. The unfolding of this world will bring you light, give you understanding. You will shine bright in a wicked and crooked world. May your witnessing power be multiplied now. In every respect, they will behold your deeds, not just your words. They will see your actions and they will give glory to your Father. Thank you, great God. Blessed be your name. Amen.